Okay, so this very tall woman, and I look really short next to her. Um, <laughs> Pammy's a nurse, and I met her in the Dominican. Um, for those of you that know my girlfriend Amy Harvey, I've been on several medical missions with her. And we go to the Dominican, not because I operate there, but because we look in people's ears and listen to their heart and lungs. We make them feel good. And it's primary care medicine, but it's like it's, back, it's going back to touching the human spirit. Well, I met Pammy on this trip. And Pam and I were walking up into a village one day, and we were talking. And she's like, well, what do you do when you're not down here looking in ears and noses and, and, and you know, hearts and lungs? And I said, oh, I'm a breast cancer surgeon. And she goes, oh. She goes, I have breast cancer. I said, what? And she said, oh, I have breast cancer. But it was like, I, 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 I took care of it. It's done, and it's over. And I go, oh, the nice nurse that swept it under the carpet very quickly and neatly, tidily pushed it away because can't let that stuff change your life, you know? Can't let that experience. And I will tell you. Although some of you who've had chemo and surgery and radiation or mastectomies and reconstruction, some of the women that have the toughest times are those that don't lose their hair, that don't lose their breast, because then they feel guilty because they see other women that had it worse, and because they still feel the same fear and the same paralysis that everybody else does that goes through chemo, but somehow they feel like they're not entitled to it because it's not so bad. Or people say, oh, you got to keep your breast, you got to keep your hair, life is good for you. <laughs> Not the case. It's still cancer and it's still scary. So Pammy had a fear of heights. Okay, she really didn't like heights. And she had a twin sister who was very cool, who's always snapping pictures. And um, there was this place that we stayed that has a slight cliff. It's actually a diving platform, which we um, told the, our children they're not allowed to dive off of, you know, because um, the first year, that's my son at the bottom who's just been diving. Um, <laughs> The first year we went there, um, the kids would sneak out there and do it at nighttime because they didn't want us to know, which really scared the crap out of me once I saw it. But being the, the safe surgeon that I am, the real scary part about this is not that you're going to hurt yourself jumping off or diving off. It's that you can't get out because the waves come and smash you against the rock. So I went up to Ace Hardware and bought that, that yellow nylon rope and tied it into knots. And then we tied it up there. And of course, I think I torqued the people that were running the medical mission because they just didn't want people to do it. And I said, they're going to do it anyway. So if they're going to do it, let's make it safe. So anyway, the onlookers up top were watching. And that's Pam. And Pam was at the edge of the cliff because Pam was scared. And as we start talking about all this stuff, I said, Pam, do something that takes you out of your comfort zone. You know, cancer takes you out of your comfort zone without your will. But sometimes when you take yourself out of your comfort zone and do something completely different, it liberates you to give you this other place. So Pammy was on the edge of the cliff. You can't see me, but I'm actually on that other side, not in the slide. And Pam jumped, and she splashed, and she swam, and she came out to me, and she's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe how great this feels. And the irony is, like, I didn't even know there was someone up here taking pictures. And her sister sent these pictures to me, and I said, how perfect is this? These pictures came to me. That January, like February, they came to me when I was doing my talk two weeks later in March, and I'm going, oh, the cliff moment. And it's real, because she's a real person who had swept it under the carpet. And I'm not saying that jumping off this cliff changed her life. I'm just saying that she got out of her comfort zone, and she got to a place where she realized that cancer may have changed something, and that if you don't kind of open your mind to see other possibilities, you can miss them. So there's choices on the cliff. Choice number one. You may remain paralyzed on the edge of the cliff in fear. Like that girl in the picture, you can stand there and do nothing and be paralyzed. You can free fall. And free falling happens a lot. And I do see a lot of you free fall, and it's okay. Because free falling is not so bad. It's kind of fun until you land. Um, and if you hit hard, you pick yourself back up and you put the pieces together. And sometimes people do free fall, and they free fall, and I get the phone call because they call about something completely unrelated and kind of irrelevant. And as I'm listening, I'm hearing that they're free falling off that cliff. And that's the time we try to pull you back in, and that's when sometimes we make the emergency phone call to Ann or Stacy or to one of the girls from the support group, or I drag you out to exercise class with us or do something else. So free falling is not the, next, the best choice. My choice, because you know I like angels, is to find a set of wings. Because if you're on the edge of the cliff and you find a set of wings, now I know I have a pilot's license, so it's easier for me to fly, but <laughs> you can strap on those wings and fly away. And you can fly away to a destination that you choose, not that's at the bottom of the cliff, 
Not that's going to be paralyzed on the edge, but you, you get to pick your destination. So you survive cancer when your treatment's over, when you go back to your previous life. That means you're surviving. You're going back, you go to work, you get up, you send the kids on the bus, you do the stuff you need to do, you follow up with your doctors, you take your tamoxifen, you take your Remedex, you take the side effects, um, and the cancer experience really hasn't changed anything that happens each and every day. And unfortunately, when you're done with your treatment sometimes, people think this is what happens. And when you're not all like smiles and back to your normal self, and they're wondering why that is, it's because something has changed and they don't know that you've changed inside, even though you may physically still look the same, it's still not the same. Everything's different. So you're a thriver, T-H-R-I-V-E-R, when your cancer treatment's in the past, when you realize that your future wasn't guaranteed to you no matter what. It may just have taken the cancer to educate you that you now need to start living in the moment. And there's nothing wrong with living in the moment, it's a great thing. Um, and I have been told time and time again, I'm a doer, I'm doing, I'm flitting around and, you know, I'm kind of like the bee that buzzes from the flower to flower. And my kids are the flowers with a pollen that are going, yo mom, come on over here. And this is Lauren, not the best picture again, didn't blow up so well. This is Lauren and Tim who just got married. Lauren is my bee in the moment girl. After her brain tumor, she chose not to go back to her crazy life as a radiologist. I told her, I said, they probably cut out the part that reads mammographies or whatever. Um, but Lauren, Lauren could have chosen to go back to a totally crazy life with a stressful job and go back into a rat race that wasn't honoring her because she was in a, she was in a group practice that was basically beating her into submission. And I'm not saying that it was that, that what caused her cancer, but her cancer taught her that she deserved better and she deserved more. And she truly started living in the moment. And uh, we're actually taking her out for a live in the moment weekend in February at Nemecolon. So if you hear that a whole bunch of doctors got arrested, it'll be us. <laughs> and being in the moment is a great gift. And uh, for those of you who haven't experienced healing modalities such as Reiki and massage and guided imagery and reflexology and healing touch, I urge you to try it. Um, Mary Lou is one, another one of our fabulous practitioners. She's an angel. She's a gift from God. And being in the moment is what Reiki gave to me. Learning to truly be in the moment and not be worried about the past because we ruminate over that way too much and not be so stressed over the future that we forget to be where we are right now. So here you go. You're a thriver when you get to create the life that you deserve to live. You have to create the life that you deserve to live. And many of you had baggage before cancer, and don't tell me you didn't, because I sat there and listened to your stories. And although we were behind those closed doors and those stories are ours, y'all had baggage. Some of you had a six-piece set, some of you had a carry-on. But y'all have baggage. And baggage is something that before cancer, you pick it up and you shuck it along. Could be a job, could be a spouse, could be a mother-in-law could be kids, could be whatever. But you gotta pack your baggage and get rid of it. And now, you gotta learn to prioritize. You've gotta put yourself number one on your top 10 list. Um, anybody remember the lesson of the Pink Rose Quartz Heart? Who's the most important person in the world? Me. I should be hearing 100 me's right now. <laughs> if you don't make yourself first, nobody else will. I am the most important person in my life. And I make time to go to the gym. I don't make enough time for massage, which I'm working on. Um, I make time to make healthy choices for food. Um, I make time to try to make my clothing look coordinated in the morning because it makes me feel good and put together. And I think it's going to make you think I'm a better doctor because I'm coordinated. Because <laughs> my sisters beat me up about it. Um, but if you don't take time to take care of you, nobody else is going to see that you are the most important person in your life. So there's this thing being self-centered. Lindsay Lohan, remember the thing from the Super Bowl last year? The milkaholic commercial and Lindsay thought that they were talking about her as a little girl. Lindsay, the milkaholic? Well, Lindsay Lohan is self-centered. This is not what I'm talking about. I do not want a room full of Lindsay Lohans. <laughs> I would prefer that you be centered on self. And 
Joni, for any of you who have never done Joni's yoga class, you can learn how to be centered on self. Being centered on self means that you know that you need to take care of yourself first and that you do have to see yourself as being important enough to care for. It's not self-centered. 